Okay, class, welcome back to English 1301. I want to go over where we are in the semester and um, this final lecture that I'm going to have here this semester as we get ready to wrap up the semester. Last week, I sent you a memo that talks about our final exam and um, it goes like this. Due to new requirements from the EPCC English division, I've adjusted the syllabus in regards to the rest of the semester. You'll be required to write one final essay. It will serve as your final exam. I've posted the directions for this essay under handouts on Blackboard. So, <coughs> excuse me class, once again, you should have pulled this up last week and here are the directions so I'm going to help you with this. So the directions once again for your final exam are under handouts on Blackboard. Next week and that's right now I'll post a lecture that discusses this final essay. For this essay you are not required to go to the writing center but you may get assistance there if you wish. In addition, you will turn in only the final draft through Blackboard messages. So class all semester long, you have sent me a first draft, a final draft, um, and then a writing center verification. For this essay, just turn in the final draft. It'll be 700 to 1,000 words. Make sure that it's formatted with the MLA formatting that we've been using all semester, please. While all of your other essays this semester receive letter grades, this essay will be graded pass or no pass. If you pass the essay, there will be minimal comments. If you receive a no pass, the grade will be justified with extensive comments. So, for my three main hybrid classes, section 21416, <coughs> excuse me, and 21419 and 21437, you will turn this essay in on May 4th, and <clears throat> my one online class this semester, completely online, Section 20755, you will turn this essay in on May 3rd. I'm now grading your review essay seven days a week. I'm confident that I will have them back to you within two weeks after your deadline date for submission. I hope you stay safe and well. It's class, so that's where we are right now. I'm grading those essays. Many of you have heard from me. Uh, some of you will soon hear from me. I'm having some students making adjustments. <coughs> Excuse me, class. On many of them, I have graded them and given them back. So we're going to continue that way. So, class. Then this final essay, which talks about it'll be graded pass or no pass. So I'll read through it. And then if it's a pass, it's almost like the way we do exit exams. If it's a pass, it'll be minimal comments and you'll receive a hundred points, a hundred percent. If it is a no pass, it'll receive a 50%, and then there'll be many comments justifying why it is a no passing essay. Okay, and then in the end, I will have your grades in through Blackboard messages. It'll shoot out like this this semester your memoir 25% of your grade, your profile 25% of your grade your review 25% of your grade and your final exam 25% of your grade okay so <coughs> excuse me class <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about this prompt so for your final exam it tells us imagine that the Chamber of Commerce is sponsoring an essay contest 
The prize-winning essays will be published in the El Paso Times in a special Sunday issues section entitled The Special Traditions I Remember. Each essay is to be an essay, each entry is to be an essay that explains one of the following. So, <coughs> excuse me class, got some allergies and maybe a little bit of a cold. A local custom. Explain one of the interesting local customs. Remember to give plenty of details so that a person from another area of the country would understand what that custom is and why it occurs. While you want your explanation to be interesting, you don't want the custom to seem silly. So be careful in choosing the details as you explain. So, if you're from the borderlands, um, El Paso or Juarez, write about a local custom. If you're from some other where, where else, you can write about a local custom that you know of where you're living. Okay. And what could be a local custom? So maybe for someone from El Paso, it could be something like, the Fiesta de las Flores, if you go to that or gone to that before and you could write about it. It could be something like the Plaza Film Festival, if you do something like that. <coughs> Excuse me, class. It could be something like if you do a cruise on Friday night or you go to Chico's Tacos. That could be an interesting local custom that you could write about. It's some that you do or have done with your family or with your friends, okay? Maybe it's like a, a, a custom of going out to Red Sands. Maybe it's once a year a local custom of going to Cloudcroft. Maybe it's getting together for a football game or the annual homecoming or to watch the Dallas Cowboys play, something like that, class. Something like that could be a local custom, okay? Explain one of the interesting local customs. <clears throat> so this is one of the local customs you know about. Remember to give plenty of details so that a person from another area in the country would understand <laughs> what the custom is and why it occurs. So you give us a narrative of what you know. Okay. Maybe it could be something like the Neon Desert Music Festival. You write it. Or a Tejano Festival. Or maybe there's some annual play you go and see. Or a class, so that'd be 700,000 words. Or a class of family tradition. Explain one of your own family traditions. Number two, so one or the other. Remember to give plenty of details, and plenty of context for the tradition. On what occasions does it occur? Who participates and why? How often does this occur, etc.? You want to create a picture of this tradition for your readers so choose your details carefully. So a family tradition, it could be what you do for Christmas Eve, if you do something like the Posada. Maybe a family tradition you have for Christmas. <coughs> Excuse me, can you write about it? Maybe an Easter tradition. Maybe can you explain to us a Thanksgiving tradition you have? Maybe you get together once a year for a family reunion. Could you write about that? Maybe an annual summer getaway that you do with your family. Maybe getting together to watch the Dallas Cowboys game or the San Antonio Spurs. Or getting together at your grandma's house for breakfast. Or having a cookout once a month. So, that's number two. 
Explain one of your own family traditions. Remember, you give us plenty of context for that tradition. On what occasions does it occur? Who participates and why? How often does this occur, etc.? You want to create a picture of this tradition for your readers. So choose your details carefully. So, <coughs> class, once again, you write an essay for me, either number one or number two. A local custom or family tradition, 700 to 1,000 words. Now, I'm going to amend this final paragraph here. It says, in each case above, you will need to investigate the tradition or custom in two stages. I'm going to only have it in one stage. I'm going to augment this. First, draw on your own memory of the custom or tradition, accumulating as many details as you can. That's what I want you to do. Class, I've decided to make this an essay where you write about what you know narrative. Second, <clears throat> it says here you will want to collect some extra information. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. If you are explaining a local custom, you will want to look up some accounts of it in a newspaper or interview a participant. No. I'm going to adjust this. I've decided I'm going to augment these directions. <laughs> If you're explaining a family tradition, you'll want to talk to members of your family to get perspectives about the traditions besides your own. Class, I've decided you don't have to do that. I want to hear from you. I want you to write about what you know, what you've experienced. 700 to 1,000 words, class, a local custom, or a family tradition. Double space it. Give me a good title, class. Some of the review essays I've been going through, students don't have titles on them, class. I'm helping students now. Even for a review essay, you want to give me a title that captures the thesis of your essay. It's not enough to write a restaurant review and just put the name of the restaurant. That doesn't take any skill. <clears throat> Give me a title that, once again, titillates the reader or captures the essence of your thesis. Okay? So I'm having some, I've read some good reviews. Some students, I'm having to make some adjustments before I grade that third portfolio, but I've read some good ones so far, so make those adjustments if you need to. Get those back to me as soon as possible. Now, once again, for the hybrid class, turn this in May 4th, okay? My online class, May 3rd, and then I'll start grading those. Pass or no pass class to help you out. You don't need to go to the Writing Center, but you can get help there if you need it. All I'm looking for is double-spaced, that final essay on the 4th, for my one online class on the 3rd. And then class, I'll grade those, continue grading your review essays, get those back to you within the two weeks from where you turn those in. And then that'll be the end of the semester class. Here's once again our... You will not need to come to work to school during finals week. Class during finals week, I'll be tabulating your grades. If I need to have you make adjustments, you'll make those adjustments. And that final week, I'll be working with you one-on-one. -on -one class through uh, Blackboard messages. So we won't need to go that final week, but we'll be there next week. And I'll be there once again for my hybrid classes to help you in any way <coughs> that you need help. 
So, class, that's it. Now, my hope is, class, once again, I've read some good work this semester, and um, it's been challenging times with the pandemic. It looks like we're getting through it, class. It looks like things are looking up. My final comments for you as students is this. I hope class that once again, um, that you continue to find what you need, what you want to do uh, in life once again. I've read some good work this semester. If you like college, stay with it. If you had a frustrating semester, always remember that the next semester is uh, a new start, a new start. Um, I've read some really good work from my students. I'm wishing you the best class and I'm hoping that you have a great summer and uh, we've gone through a lot this semester. We've learned a lot of good things. My hope is that you can take what you've learned this semester with me and take it on into your next classes and continue the journey and continue to work on your writing just like I'm continuing to work on mine. Excellent, okay, and so that class, I think we're done. If you have any specific questions, you can uh, write to me over Blackboard messages, I'll get back to you. And once again, I'll be looking forward to getting those essays on the fourth, my one online class, section 20755, We'll be getting that on the, the third. Tabulate those grades, get your averages. Uh, the school posts your grades, usually about a, two weeks after the semester ends. So we'll make that deadline. And with that said, class, good luck, good luck, good luck. I'm wishing you the best. I hope you have a great summer and um, good luck in your studies for the rest of your college career. Take care now. Bye-bye.